Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Bibliophiles, a show from the Ann Arbor District Library in Michigan that's all about books. Each episode, we spend a few minutes talking about a book from a pre-designated theme, and this time we are all talking about books in verse. I'm Christopher, and I'm here, as always, with Amanda and Lucy. Amanda, what did you pick for us this time? All right. So I read a lot of middle grade and teen fiction and a lot of novels and verse come across in those two categories. So I've read a handful. And for this one, I decided to read the book Alone. It is a middle grade novel written by Megan E. Freeman. And the book was published in 2021. And it centers on a young girl named Maddie. She's 12 years old. She lives in a small town in Colorado. And she and her two best friends, they have a secret sleepover. And then when the morning comes, Maddie wakes up and everybody's gone. There's nobody in the house, nobody in the town. She is alone. Everything appears to be evacuated. Everyone is mysteriously gone, disappear. So Maddie is left alone, the title of the book. And you feel that aloneness throughout the entire book, even at the very beginning when she's panicked and doesn't know what's going on. Um, there's no power, there's no internet, no phone. And so it's a survival story. She has to learn how to... Um, gather food, find things to eat, how to protect herself, um, keep herself safe. Um, eventually there is a dog that keeps her um, company. I think his name is George. And she encounters all kinds of things throughout the book. As time goes by, there are, as seasons go by, there's different forms of weather. There's heat and extreme cold. There are natural things that are happening out there like wild animals. There are looters coming across. Who does she trust? Because she still doesn't know what's happening where everybody is gone. Um, but it's it's kind of sad and heartbreaking too because she's only 12 and she's, you know, has these things she wants to experience and she misses her family greatly. And the whole time she's just wishing and hoping and thinking about, you know, when I see my family again, when I see my mom again. Um, but it has a lot of heart in it and it really makes you think about like what it means to be alone and how much you rely on your people. And if you all of a sudden wake up tomorrow morning and nobody was there, like, what would you do? Where would you go? How would you survive? So it's really good for those who are into survival stories, whether you're um, an adult reader or a younger reader. I think it's good for all ages. Again, I read a lot of middle grade and teen. I know not everybody gravitates towards those genres, but they're really accessible, particularly if you want to try a book in verse. There's a lot of really great middle grade books that are written in verse. Um, and I actually just want to read to you the very first little tiny chapter in this one. Um... And, all right, this is not adolescent hyperbole. This is my reality, alone in this place where I've been surviving on my own for over three years, with no one but a big smelly Rottweiler who farts and hogs the covers. You might think I'm exaggerating, but I'm not. I'm not just being dramatic, like my grandma might say. I figured by the time I was a teenager, I'd be thinking about getting my driver's permit, going to dances, playing varsity soccer, and kissing, but instead, I'm thinking about where to find food and fuel and water and whether to use Mountain Dew to force flush the toilet or to drink, even though it's the color of radioactive urine and it's probably toxic when ingested over long periods of time. Better to be radioactive or dehydrated? These are the questions that plague my daily existence, at least for now, at least until my parents come back. And then it goes into her um, as time goes by. So really captivating story. I read it maybe maybe a year and a half ago. Just a really solid read, really good middle grade um, book in verse. So Lucy, what book did you bring to share with us? Um, before I tell you about my book, I would like to say that I want to read the book alone, like today. It sounds so good. I love survival stories. I love any book where there's a dog in it. Um, yeah, I'm like, okay. I want to do that today. But anyway, the book that I um, am talking about is a YA book. So a young adult book. I did look for an, um, like an adult fiction in verse, but um, I didn't find one that I kind, kind of clicked on. So this is called All the Fighting Parts. And it is by Hannah V. Sawyer, who is the poet laureate, was the poet laureate of Baltimore in 2016. And it is the story of a 16 year old named Amina Conte, and she is abused by the pastor in her church that sort of um, 
it doesn't happen at the beginning of the book, but the book skips around in time. So it's kind of like, um, you know, this many days before the assault, this many days after the assault, this many days before um, the trial. So she goes back in time, skips around. So you kind of see what was going on in her life before this happened and how it changed her life immediately. Um, she lives alone with her father because her mother died. Her mother took a trip to Sierra Leone as sort of a freedom fighter and died while she was there. And why that is important is that that spirit of uh, that freedom fighting spirit is really a big part of who Amina is. It inspires Amina to keep using her voice throughout this whole thing. And that's where the title comes from. Her father always tells her, Oh, you have all, all your mother's fighting parts. You have all the fighting parts. So, Amina starts to get starts to work for the pastor at her church called Holy Tabernacle. The pastor is also her boyfriend's uncle and a very, very um, revered member of the community. Everybody looks up to him. Everybody relies on him and she's doing work for him. And he convinces her to come to his office and do a little extra paperwork. And then he assaults her. He rapes her. And she doesn't say anything about it. She just kind of closes down and she feels like, um, you know, she's, she goes through a lot of the thoughts that one might go through if this happens. Like, is it her fault? She feels so much shame. She worries that she's not the right kind of victim, that she's not a good victim. She's too old. She should have known better. Um, and then there's the complication of the entire community supporting him. So that's not, really giving things away because because of the way this book skips around in time you get a lot of the story up front but what then happens is how amina fights back and and how she can speak out against this pastor and help you know the community see who he really is someone else comes forward before amina doesn't even does and that inspires her to come forward and then you realize when you hear these different voices talking about what happened to them, that there are different ways for people to be survivors. For some people that is to like speak out against it and make sure that he gets um, brought to trial. And for other people, it's just to get through what they're going through. So the book does a really good job of showing those different sides of that. The author, um, Hannah Sawyer, is a survivor of clergy sexual abuse. And she wrote this book during the trial for the, the man who abused her. And it really helped her to process and to get through that trial and to also want to share with people like this strong voice, this, um, but also all the complicated thoughts and feelings that go on with that. So because she's a, a poet first and foremost, the way she writes a lot of this book, like the poems are all kind of, a lot of them are formed differently, um, different types of poetry depending on the mood and, and who's speaking and what they're talking about but then also like something might be shaped like a raindrop or something like that so visually it's really interesting too um and it sounds like a heavy read it definitely has serious material in it but it also is um i mean it's the story of this strong girl who ultimately you know that's there's some hope in it too and uh a message of perseverance. So that is All the Fighting Parts by Hannah V. Sawyer. Christopher, what did you read? Well, those both sound like two great books. And I shouldn't be surprised, but it's really interesting how you do convey all these very complicated stories and ideas through a whole novel in verse. My book is really no different um, I chose the book called Sharp Teeth by Toby Barlow. I didn't realize that I had already read a book by Toby Barlow, which was Baba Yaga, a much more conventional book. It's uh, not told in verse. Um, but Sharp Teeth is one of the most unique books I've ever seen. The structure of it, of course, is verse. Um, the plot is about rival werewolf gangs in L.A., and the tone is very, very much Raymond Chandler or perhaps the movie Chinatown. 
Uh, <laughs> so you have these rival werewolf gangs and you know of course everything is in verse so it really is a little jarring and kind of odd to be thinking of this um this kind of maybe elevated language talking about these werewolf gangs one of the gangs is really involved in a local bridge tournament and you're following their progress <laughs> as they uh, move up in the brackets and are getting closer to winning. Meanwhile, one of the werewolves, a woman, falls in love with a dog catcher. And that plot kind of stays throughout the whole story. Uh, so it's quite an unusual book, uh, to say the least. You know, some parts are kind of funny, I guess, it, in one scene, a couple is going to have sex and they have to decide whether they're going to have sex as humans or as these kind of werewolf dog creatures. Uh, so that's kind of an unusual debate that you don't often see in many books. And then there's the kind of overworked cop named Peabody who is following a series of murders and trying to figure out what's going on. The whole story wraps up in a kind of um, bloody, very cinematic, you know, shootout and attack. So this is not the normal, not the usual kind of book that I read, but it was such an odd combination of factors. It kind of works and um i could very easily seeing it being a movie so that that is sharp teeth by toby barlow um does anyone have any any final thoughts on uh on books in verse well not on books in verse but that reminds me of one of my favorite books which is mongrels by um stephen graham jones and it's about werewolves, but it really deals with like what happens when they're humans. Like what are the daily lives of well, werewolves? Like, so I really like the idea of the book that you're talking about doing that same thing. Like, yes, they play bridge, you know, um, they fall in love with dog catchers. It sounds really interesting. Both of the books that you talked about, I would like to read. Yeah. So yeah. Well, and I like too how all three of the books we presented were very different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, Lucy, you mentioned how the book you were reading had with books in verse, it's for, if anybody's new to books in verse or it sounds daunting because you don't read poetry or something, it's, they're not necessarily just like poems on the page. Like the one mm -hmm. I read here, it's written like in like smaller format on the page, but it sort of reads more like a novel. And a lot of them are yeah. like that, but some do get like the, the, the one you referenced, Lucy, some of them do have very creative ways to put words on the page. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't make it any harder it's just a different way to read it and they're not all poems you have to sort out and understand a lot of times it's just um it's sort of interesting thinking about like the the author's choice of what words to fit on the page you know and why in writing it in verse versus writing it as a novel they are the, the and i've read a bunch of novels in verse and they do tend to be quicker reads where you spend more time thinking about it in mm -hmm. some ways because of the condensed um, amount of words on each page, which is pretty neat. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think that, um, you know, sometimes like when I was reading this one and when I'm reading other novels in verse, I forget that I'm reading a, a book in verse. Once you get sucked into the story, um, it just sort of the rhythm feels natural. But I think like what you're saying, Amanda, with, with poetry in general, and so with novels in verse, like the words are so important, you know, um, authors have to convey more with fewer words. And so I think that's why books like this can have such impact because, you know, um, there's not a lot to like rifle through. You're getting the point, but there's a lot to think about. So mm -hmm. you haven't tried a novel in verse, just find one yeah. and try it out. I would recommend it. Well, as always, uh, we'd love to know what you're reading, so you can let us know at uh, the link below. Until next time, happy reading. <laughs>